Hello everybody, it's your girl Bria Van Kooten and welcome back to Bria Loves Music. We are back with another video. As you guys can see by the title, I am here with the one month review of Cowboy Carter, y'all. It's been one month already since that album has been released. I've listened to it multiple times now and it has been settled into my spirit, pumped into my veins. <laughs> And I was like, you know what, let's review it one month later. I did that previously with Renaissance. I will link that up here in the cards. And I will link my other Beyonce reviews and all of that in the cards and at the end screen at the end if you guys want to check it out. Beehive, you already know. Comment down below with the bees, you know, the emoji, of course. But yes, one month review. I'm ready to get into it. And I did do a reaction to the original when the when the album originally came out in March. I sat with my friends and we talked about the whole album. I will link that in the cards as well. So yes, y'all. Without without further ado, let's get into this video. Come on, Kalia, Janae, roll it. No one calls me that. Hey, give us Tony Braxton vibrato. This song is a bop to move. So of course, Chloe and Halle Bailey <laughs> are gonna get visuals because duh, it makes no sense. Look at the material. I'm living for the aesthetics. And Before I get into the video, I definitely wanna say this is a review. We are, obviously I listened to that album already, we are talking about what I've noticed in the last month of re-listening to the album. I don't know why people like watching reaction reviews where people are just sitting there listening to the music and not speaking. That makes no sense to me because why click on a reaction review if you just want people to sit there and not talk about what they're hearing. <laughs> That always kills me anytime I see it because I'm like, you could just listen to the album on your own. Why would you want to watch a YouTube video? Watch a YouTube video with people just sitting there and listening when you can do that on your own, you know? Yeah. But anyway, let's get into the video, y'all. I'm gonna play, of course, some of the songs, play some of my favorite parts, talk about some more meanings and things that I realized while listening to the album. Of course, we now know from when the album first dropped that Cowboy Carter was actually recorded first and then Renaissance was recorded. So originally Cowboy Carter was supposed to be first but then she released Renaissance first. So when I listen to the album, a lot of like words and things that she say, I think about it like connecting to Renaissance and how this was supposed to come first and then Renaissance was supposed to come later. And of course I have re-listened to Renaissance since then and I'm hearing like things in vogue are that are similar so i would say if you haven't definitely go back and listen to renaissance now that you've heard copper carter because you definitely hear some things so yeah let's get into it we have of course song number one america requiem which is oh. <laughs> it's so good Change your name and not the way to pray be in my choir teacher bag when I hear this song like because if you don't know I went to school for music I have a college degree in music I have my bachelor's in music and then I performed for the majority of my life in high school I went to perform, perform in arts high school I was in the choir just growing up like I'm, I love music so much so hearing this song makes me wish I was in high school again and I could like my teacher can conduct this and we sing this together. Like it gives very much <laughs> very much choir teacher. Like anytime I listen to this, I just be uh it's so good. One thing about my girl, she is amazing with intro songs. Like her intros eat all the time. Like so beautiful. So start off with American Requiem. Requiem is the repose of the dead. So we are killing old habits 
It is bringing in the new. We are reclaiming the black music. You change your name, but not the way you play pretend. Like, you are racist. You're not, you can't play pretend. We know who you are. We see your true colors. And then following up, like in later songs, where she says, "There's a whole lot of red in that black. There's a whole lot of red in that white and blue. Like a lot of blood. Like the storytelling in this album is so so good. You have to really listen and pay attention. And then, hello, old friend. When I hear that, I'm like, because this album was supposed to be like I said, this album was supposed to be first before Renaissance. So she's introducing it like, hello, old friend. I'm back." <laughs> then also it could connect to like the requiem it could connect to let's ditch old thinking our old way of thinking of like how country music is supposed to be this is my way of doing country music she's like she said this is a not a country album this is a beyonce album so let's let's ditch like our old way of thinking of genres even when linda martell says genres are a funny little concept aren't they like because you know, let's change our mindset of what a genre is supposed to be. And then, even though this is like a country album, it still has elements of pop, elements of R&B, elements of rap, hip hop, rock, all of that mixed up together. And I love it. Go listen to a little bit more of America Requiem, and then we're gonna go to the next song. But America Requiem, that girl. There's a lot of talking going on. What? you know what she's talking about at the cmas her performing daddy lessons it's a lot of talking going on while i sing my song y'all are chatting because y'all are mad can you hear me i'm gonna fast forward to uh, my favorite part of the song <laughs> to say I spoke to country. Then the rejection case said I wasn't country enough. You said she wasn't country enough. But y'all yeah, said she spoke to country, but now she's not country enough because y'all don't want her in the genre. Ah, <laughs> oh, so it should be. The granddaddy of a little child man. Like, the grandbaby, look what she did. Look what she did. Look what she at. Baby, about, about to start off the album with this is like, Stepping into some powerful shit. Yes, yes, this part. Goodbye to what has been like. Let's old ways. Let's get it out the way. Pretty house that we never settled in. The house that America built that we never settled. The black people never settled in. Even though we built it, we never really settled in. I be in my choir teacher bag, y'all don't know. And then Blackbird, a vibe, like, so beautiful, so beautiful. If you don't know, dedicated to black women from Paul McCartney, of course, of the Beatles. Dedicated to black women, a beautiful song. And then the fact that you have five black women on the track. We love it. We stand. Shout out to Tanner Adele, E. Spencer, Tiara Kennedy, and Raina Roberts, and of course Beyonce. Cause it's a lot of beautiful song. Like I just be on the train, listen to it. Like. Y'all already know Sixty Carriages. Talking about the center theme, of course, of Sixty Carriages is your dreams her working very, very hard. And then at 16, you know, that's when No, No, No came out when she was 16. And then watching those other carriages drive away with the dreams of what she was working on and her childhood going away because now she's stepping into this new chapter, this new phase of all the things that she's worked for. It's about such a beautiful song. Back in the bus with the bar with the bed. <laughs> Y'all know that's my favorite line. Eat every time. Next we have Protector. Mommy, can I hear the lullaby? Mommy, can I hear the lullaby? Yes. Yes, Ruby. I was saying look 
fucking America. And let me tell y'all, because I don't think y'all caught the T of that line. And there I was tangled up in marigolds. Y'all remember when she did her like pregnancy little post when she was pregnant with the twins. And what was she wrapped up in? What was she tangled up in? The marigold cloth around her, like. Eats, eats, like the. The storytelling and the symbolism is so good. Her wrapped up in a marigold for the pregnancy shoot. And then we have Rumi on the song. We love a good storyteller. Like, tell us a story, B. Baby, gonna shine on your own. I'll be a projector. Have you let yourself get you down left? So many roses, but not to me. It's so quick and fast, but it's speaking some true shit. Like, love your flaws, love yourself, and even if you have flaws, like flaws and all, love yourself, flaws and all. Like, and whatever you have, show it to the world. Don't hide it. And she's connecting it to like, you're the rose, I'm the rose. Even though, like I said, a quick, short interlude is speaking shit. Like, really listens to the words. And it's so catchy. And every time I listen to it, it feels like I'm listening to a Chloe and Halle song. Like, it gives me Chloe and Halle vibes all the time. So freaking catchy. Like, every time I hear it, I just be like, that is a bop. So, you know, Texas Hold'em is a card game where the opponent and the players, you know, you can't see your opponent's card until the end of the game. So the players can bluff and play the game like they have better cards. So it's a double entendre of Beyonce saying, stop playing games, telling people stop playing games and show your true intentions. Don't be a bitch, just take it to the head. Like, come to the dance floor, don't be a bitch, just take it to the head. There's a heat wave in my city. We're going to the bar that we always thought was fun. Like, come, in, come, 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 come as you are. Very much that. <laughs> and of course, the double entendre of her being from Houston, Texas. Texas Hold'em. And of course, before we move on, I'm gonna play a little bit of the remix because you know we have the Texas Hold'em Pony Up remix. First of all, I need her to come out with a dance because I need like one cohesive dance to learn. I can't be learning all these different dances with people creating their own. So Beyonce and the team, I need you to come up with one cohesive dance so when this song comes on, we all have the same dance at the party. Woke up this morning, might as well just throw it on. So Ronnie Young, we gon' do see Dosey Doe, Dosey Doe, the connection again. Dosey Doe, in Desert Eagle. And you know, the Dosey Doe is a Western dance. So sweet, I give you kisses in the back seat. Be your bodyguard, you could be my bodyguard. I can protect you against storytelling because we go from my protector into bodyguard. I'm gonna protect you. I want to be your bodyguard as well. Hey, Miss Honeybee. Hey, Miss Honeybee. It's Dolly B. And I'm too hard here. Bless her heart. Now, the bless her heart sends me every time. Now, flame and lots of fun over here. Bless her heart. Oh, so country. Just a hair of a different color. But it's the same. Dolly, I'm one of you. Go on, come for my man. Of course, you already know. Self explanatory. Beyonce. This is Beyonce's rendition of Jolene, you know, Dolly Parton had her version of Jolene. And now this is Beyonce's. I'm a Creole Benji bitch from Louisiana. Don't mess with my man, girl. I mean, back up. Don't mess up a happy home. I love this song because it's like, again, we talked about the different genres in one album. This song gives that country vibe. But it, but it also has like a R and B vibe at the same time. And I just want to give Dolly Parton her tens and her flowers because one thing about it, she's a great songwriter, and she knows how to make a hit. I'm gonna give my girl her tens all the time. 
and then the same like and the storytelling y'all listen listen I she killed Jolene, y'all. And the bathroom attendant let her right in to do it because she was a big fan. Mood. <laughs> Me as the bathroom attendant seeing Beyonce walking. Come right in, sis. Okay. That bitch went that way. Okay. <laughs> y'all, the storytelling eats. Like, I have to listen to Jolene into Daughter all the time because the storytelling is so good. But Daughter is everything. I think, like I said, I think that's my favorite song on the album. Definitely comment down below. Let me know what y'all favorite song on the album. At the end, I'll say my top three, but for right now, I think Daughter is number one for sure. She said I could be a bitch, but I can also be cool and calm, but I can also fuck you up all in one. And we were talking about earlier about the themes about like fathers passing on things. And again, you could you they say I'm like my father. But I'm the furthest thing from quiet boys and horses. I gotta go to my you already know what's my favorite part. If you don't know, we don't play it right now. Like to go into Carl Mio Ben, y'all don't understand how much of a connection that I feel because like I said in the beginning, I'm a music girl. Obviously I told you guys school for music, degree, performing. I sung Carl Mio Ben in college for a show. We had a performance and I sung that song. So it has a special connection in my heart. So when I heard her sing this, I'm like, the I'm really a music girl, like for real. And again, talk, talk, talking about the genres, you're going now into classical and then you're singing in Italian. And then we go to spaghetti <laughs> from singing Italian. Like y'all are not getting it. Like a genius, like she's really that girl for real. Like your faves could never honestly. <laughs> And you know, I talked about this earlier with Linda Martell saying genres are funny little concept, aren't they? Because of course, like I said earlier, the mixture of genres in this one album, but also if you don't know, I said this in the previous video when I did for Cabo Carter, but I'm gonna repeat it again <laughs> because you know, I love fun facts. So Linda Martell, she came out with her music. She was an R&B girly and then went into country music and she was met with a lot of hate and racism and all of that. And you know, that the same thing happened to Beyonce, transitioned into a new genre and you know, she was met with a lot of hate, hatred because of that. So the fact that she had Linda Martell on the album and that symbolism of the same thing happening years later, a great story, great storytelling and her saying genres are funny little concepts, aren't they? Yes, they are. Like the joke, the little joke behind it, the little sinister joke behind it. I stand. I know that part reminded me of like when she performs Ring the Alarm Live and she does the. Am I bugging? <laughs> I ain't need no gang, but I got shooters and I bang bang. Comparing and contrasting um, black Americans being associated with gangs and gang banging, but also comparing it, comparing that to the American cowboys carrying their guns, the right to bear arms of people carrying guns, like the storytelling, the, the contrasting. And of course, I ain't in a gang, but I shooters in a bang bang. She not in a gang. She got shooters. We're the shooters, Beehive. We are the shooters. <laughs> Cause we shoot verbally, not for real, obviously, but we be shooting for her. She ain't no gang, but she got shooters. And we do bang bang. <laughs> they call me the captain, the catwalk assassin. But Cutty, country, cutty, 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 all the same to me, playing bass, forget. By the tour, I'm gonna know that, I'm gonna know the whole verse, because I'm gonna go the fuck off. But Spaghetti is that girl, sprinkling in a little bit of rap as the genres we speak of, and it's a bop. I love when Beyonce raps, like, she's been rapping. We started off with the sing rapping in Destiny Child Days, 
and then she transitioned into like my girl rap and rapping. And then of course you got Shubuzi coming on. His part is dope as well. The girly said that they skip his part, but I like his part. Oh, out to the moon. Like this, this eats. change religions and I spend Sunday with you like girl <laughs> so alligator tear shows when an alligator catches their prey so you know a metaphor for fake tears being emotionally manipulated by whoever alligator tears is a vibe I don't see a lot of people talking about alligator tears but it's really good and anytime I listen to it my eyes are closed because it's just so smooth but yeah Next, we have Smoke Hour 2, which goes into, of course, Just For Fun. And is this a safe space, y'all? Because I'm gonna say Just For Fun is my least favorite song on the track, on the track, on the album. It's definitely at the bottom. It's not a bad song, and it, I definitely caught on to it. Because at first I was like, eh, but as I listened to it, two more times after that. I was like, okay, no, it's a cute song, but I'm not running to listen to that first. You know, that's not the first thing that I'm gonna listen to, but it's definitely cute. Yeah, that part eats. I am the man, I know it. Mm. <laughs> she ate that. I'm the only lady here, so the only thing in the room. Very much that <laughs> next we have two most wanted featuring miley cyrus i love this song such a great duet i really hope that i hear them perform this live and miley is like with the guitar playing the guitar while they sing it would be so beautiful to see that in like on a uh, award show or something Nah, it's really a freaking beautiful song. Like, and it, uh, Beyonce just used it in uh, one of her Instagram posts. I believe this is the next single. Yeah, hope I hope I see it in a performance. Like I would love to see this in a performance, but very self-explanatory. I'll be a shotgun rider till the day I die. I will be right by your side. You'll ride or die. And to have Miley on the song, because Miley's voice just works so well. Her and Beyonce, that back and forth. I love the back and forth storytelling, the duet, like a real duet. That's a real duet of going the back and forth. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. And next, another one, we have Levi's Jeans featuring Mr. Post Malone, which he ate this up. And the way he, I always, every time I listen to this song, the way he slides in to the song is so good. You call me pretty little thing. <laughs> I want to fast forward to one part that always gets me every time I hear it when Post Malone talks about, he brings up Renaissance and of course, like I said, this album was recorded before Renaissance, so it was just pre-telling what was to come and I love that. Like, I was like, the first time I heard that, I was like, oop. And then, like, obviously, let's say you listen to this album first, because this technically came first, and then go right into Renaissance. You'd be like, oh, ah. Love it. So, yeah. Next, okay, of course, Levi Jeans. Again, another self explanatory song. I want to be a Levi Jeans. I want to be next to you. I want to be stuck with you. I don't want to let you go. I don't want you to leave my side. And again, more storytelling because we went from Two Most Wanted, I want to be by your side, I want to be a shotgun rider, to Levi Jeans, I want you in my Levi Jeans so you can hug that ass all day long. 
he gonna be stuck to me by my side. You not going nowhere. And Levi's, give my girl a jean, okay? All right? Give my girl a jean. She already spiked up your sales, so why not get a pair of Levi's? The Levi's. Ooh. Y'all, give me a check if y'all steal my idea, like, for real. <laughs> So we have flip oh Flame flamenco is that girl okay definitely in my top three a bop a bop i wish it was a little longer it's not short but it's not long it's it's short it's a minute and 40 seconds it's short i'm like no i'm lying it's definitely short but it's a bop like my mind has been telling me to settle day ones have been telling me Anytime I hear that, think about think about two things. Of course, we just talked about the two most wanted, and in the song they talk about, you know, we're both still. I know we're jumping the gun, but we're we're both still young. But one day we won't be young. Continue with the that theme, but of course, of course, forever young. Forever young, I wanna be forever young. You wanna, yeah. Of course, like. <laughs> You cannot not listen to that. So I hope we get a little transition of that somewhere in there, you know, cause Beyonce love a transition. So that will be fire as well. But Flamenco, we are gonna listen to the rest of it because it's really that girl. And if you really listen to the words, it's catchy. But if you really listen to the words, it is deep. Day ones have been telling me that they won't be around. Like my day one saying that they gonna be gone. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Cause one day I won't be here. <laughs> Baby, the words are deep. Like it's very fun and catchy, but really listen to the words. Like she's talking her shit. Franco, that girl, that girl. I keep telling everybody. Flamenco is that one for real. Definitely. I said daughter, not flamenco. Linda Martell show interlude leading in to Yaya, which is a bop. Very Tina Turner, very fun. Just a good time. Like you wanna dance anytime you hear this song for real. Hello girls. Hello girls. Hello, Beyonce. It gives me very much like when you watch a movie, you know when you watch one of those movies that has music in it? This is like the transition scene and this song is playing in the background and they're dancing and doing all that stuff behind. That's what it gives me anytime I hear it. B E Y I N C E. Again, reclaiming. My family lived and died in America. Like, I am American. Reclaiming the country. Reclaiming the genre. This album is about reclaiming, okay? There's a lot of different themes, but one of the themes is definitely reclaiming. Reclaiming your power. All of that mixed up. A whole lot of red and that white and blue. Going back to that requiem, that funeral, the dead. Yeah, yeah, it's a bop. Again, going back to like Flamenco, this, it's a fun song, but she is really talking some shit when you really listen to the words. Like, it's fun, but listen to the lyrics. Like, it's some deep shit. To Louisiana, because that's the roots, you know, Mama Louisiana. <laughs> and then we got, oh, now they're not playing, right? Soft to the touch, let me hold on the whole lot of women. Soft kisses on the palace. There's an ego. Again, short. Short, short, short. The girls are complaining 
down about Desert Eagle being so short, but it is a bop. It's a lot of double entendres in this song. Of course, Desert Eagle, gas-operated semi-automatic pistol, but also a sex position as well. Shout on the video, cash chat to make him see the video. Very much that, like, only fans. You gotta pay to see this ass. Very much that. <laughs> And another double entendre, she is the show, she is the rodeo show, going back to that cowgirl, cowboy, western theme. And then we say, Desert Eagle in the backseat, big body bust it open, big body, her body bust it open, that is a sex position, but also big body referring to a big body bend, you know, a big body, a car. Then, the double entendre of it all, the do -si do of course, you know, one is a dance, but do, -si -do is also a cookie from the Gau the Girl Scouts. It's a Girl Scout cookie. The do, -si -do is a cookie with the cream filling in the middle. And she said do, -si -do it get creamy in the middle. The do, -si -do the cookie with the cream in the middle. But do, -si -do like I said, the Desert Eagle, Spread Eagle, the creamy in the middle, her vagina creamy in the middle. One bite and the box is yours. The box of the cookie, but the box, the vagina, the box. <laughs> Bruh, the storytelling and the double entendres. I stand like, I low-key wanna cry. <laughs> and we transition into my girl. Oh my god, a bop. Like, because when you first, when it first starts, you like that river dance beat, that Irish kind of beat, you know, the river dance is an Irish dance, so that you like, okay, okay, V, something different. And then to go into like. Baby, again, different genres is the, another theme. We keep saying it, but she ate with that man, ate. And if you don't know, like the river dance is performed like on the ball of your feet and then your hands are to the side. So again, another double entendre, bounce on that shit, dance, no hands, because river dance, you're performing it on the ball of your feet, hands to the side, you're not using your hands. But of, of course, you know, the first thing that the girls picked up was bouncing on a dick because bouncing on that shit, no hands, that's like <laughs> the first thing that they picked up. But it's also a double entendre of the actual river dance, but also the sexual term, of course. But again, like it could be both, it could go both ways. Like we love a double meaning, we love a pun, we love a double entendre. And the fact that she's using like the Irish, this Irish jig in the song is just pretty proven fact that like of course again we're claiming that music but black people couldn't do anything like you could sing in you could do r&b you could do country you could do rock you could do pop you could do gospel like all of that is intertwined in this album and this is why i will forever stand this lady because it transitions into two hands to heaven and you know i feel like two hands to heaven the girls love two hands to heaven and I feel like it blew up even more from them putting the track over Andrea Kelly <laughs> doing the dance. And everybody started doing the dance out and about as they've been going on their day-to-day -day life. And I love to see it. Anytime I see, I went to a Beyonce party like a week and a half ago, and they were girls doing the Andrea Kelly dance in the middle of the club. And I love to see it. It was so good to see. We were kikiing and laughing about it. It was so funny. But Two Hands to Heaven is beautiful. So good. Bottle in my hand, whiskey up high. And then that's why I said we have to throw in a little bit of gospel as well into it because she mentions a lot about God and religion throughout this song. Like with this, God God only knows. Um hope God knows though. Um in Flamingo, she says, I hope God can come and save me. And then in Daughter, of course, she mentions, I'm not like priests and whatnot. 
in the song and of course in alligator tears she said i spent sundays with you you told me to change religions i spent sunday with you and then that connects to again with daughter so let's travel to white chapels and sing hymns hold rosaries and sing in stained glass symphonies you know stained glass in the in the catholic church so it's definitely a lot of religion bringing up so that's why we gotta throw in gospel in that sense as well such a genre filled album like it's literally so much going on and it's so good it's like a thick luscious soup just a lot and you're full never seen me coming or going but you know whenever i'm here she ain't that you because you, you'll never see her coming for bro but you know when she's there because <laughs> we really never know when she's coming like she really surprises us every time and the fact that she's like yeah i know what i'm doing i, I love to gag the girls <laughs> Someone brought it up to my attention and I was like, yes. It gave very much like the dance for you when she's in that like singing, mooning type of part in dance for you. This connected to it. I'm gonna try to find the part. Yeah, this is the dance. <laughs> this part. Like they ate that. I was like, yes, very much the dance for you, the similar tune of dance for you. And then transition into Tyrant. Again, going from like going back to like river dance, going from that you don't know where it was gonna go, like, like going from that into like <laughs> I gotta suck my tea every time because you don't know where you're about to go. It's really a journey, and I love, love, love that. Tyra is that girl. She got me with the. She got that water. Because I really thought she would say she got that water. She got that wet, wet. She got that wop, that water. But it's that whoa. But I get it now. She got that whoa, there. Oh, that whoa, there. She got that whoa. <laughs> so you already know the story of Hangman. The Hangman represents something that took, they took something away from her. They took something away from Beyonce. Hangman, he stole him from me. He stole her man. He, like literally pleading. Hangman, answer me now. You owe me a debt. I hated you once, but I envy you now. Just tell me how, like, plead it. Tell me how you do it. How do you do it? How do you do this? How do you steal? How do you steal my man? And she got that woe there. <laughs> the storytelling eats, like, just eats so, so good. And then we flip into, like, now it's like going back and forth between Beyonce talking about the hangman, but then becoming that hangman, because the hangman has taught her how her ways, the meta metaphorical figure has taught Beyonce the ways. Of course, we've gone through the lyrics. Every time I ride it, obviously, again, that double entendre, you ride in, riding the horse, riding the dick, riding, uh, it becomes like something that's powerful, like, um, power. I'm in control because I'm on top. I'm writing. And then, of course, we just talked about now Beyonce becoming the tyrant. She's reclaiming her power. Again, that's another meaning behind it. Like, so they thought that they could control her. They thought that they were overpowering her, but she reclaimed her power. She's now the tyrant. And of course, like a tyrant is always is viewed as like an oppressive ruler. So... The oppressor was trying to bring her down, but now she is the tyrant. She took, she overpowered and took that control back. And of course, like we're talking about her like pleading, like teach me, teach me your ways. But is that going in between of vulnerability 
but then also the this assertiveness as well like she's vulnerable in the sense of like teach me your ways teach me I want to learn but also now she's the tyrant so now she's assertive like oh no I've got this <laughs> like uh, that's my favorite part of the song like that ending because I love how of course she sung that in the beginning but on a different beat and then at the end, of course, now we got the up-tempo beat and she's repeating the same thing. And then of course we transition into Sweet Honey Bucket, which is a bop. But honey, because it's basically like pure honey. You know, you have pure and you had honey. So Sweet Honey Bucket is like three different parts. Honey is the one though. on the train like just mesmerized with this part it's so tinselating transformative <laughs> and then to go back into that of tempo can't wait to see this live like it's gonna be fire and then the transition into amen we gotta fast forward because we gotta want to transition to amen and then the rodeo in the back Baby, storytelling. So you already know, Amen connects to American Requiem. She just said this house was built with blood involved and it crumbled. You remember, remember American Requiem what she said? Pretty house that we never settled in. The house crumbled now because it was built on lies. It was built on racism. It was not built on anything good and sturdy. Y'all not seeing my girl for real. Y'all really not seeing her. We'll be the ones to purify your thoughts. And then again, storytelling, because in American Requiem, she said, I'll be the one. But then she said, now in um, Amen, she says, we'll be the one to purify a lot of things. Like, because it can't just be me alone. I'm helping y'all teach y'all we're going to be the one to stop and cancel the generational curses. We're gonna be the one together. We're gonna do it together. Them old ideas are buried here. We buried it. And if you didn't know by now, we've been saying this the whole time. This album obviously was recorded first. So one thing about it, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play I'm That Girl next. Cause the transition from Amen into I'm That Girl is that girl, like. <laughs> Yikes, baby, I'm gonna do that every time. I'm gonna do that every time. And I, one of these days I was saying that I'm gonna listen to like it all together. Like do American, do Cowboy Carter and then into Renaissance and listen to everything straight right through. I just listen to like each album separate obviously, but I'm gonna do like for one sit and just listen to the whole thing right on through. But that transition, cause like imagine like an ax tour, the ax of her just performing like all three acts together and then going into each album. <sighs> that will eat. It gets good every time I listen to it and I learn something every time I listen to it. I hear something new, a word, a lyric, a beat, whatever, like a sample. And can we talk about the samples? Cause she sampled, I didn't listen to the whole thing of Yaya, but she sampled the Beach Boys, Good Vibrations in Yaya. And then for Riverdance, she sampled Ali Us, Follow Me. She sampled like the Irish Riverdance bop and <sighs> baby, it's just a full, great fire album. She just be doing the damn thing like, I really have no words. 
I really have no words. And then to put all those genres into one and just create this deliciousness is what I just gag about all the time. And that's why she said this is not a country album, this is a Beyonce album, because this is her version of the album. This is her version of country music. This is what she loves. And she loves music, she loves different genres, she loves creating, so this is her creation. And I love it. Genres are a funny little concept, aren't they? Because this is what you can get. And this let's let's stop all of the the what this should be, this should be, this should be. No. What do you want? Do what you want. Maybe a bop, a bop. And um, top three. I said <laughs> flamenco daughter. I think I'm gonna give it to. Oh, it's a toss up between Riverdance and Tyrant, but I'm gonna say Riverdance. But the whole album is fire. So so good. Like y'all. That's all I got for y'all. That is my second review of Cowboy Carter, the month later, one month later review. Of course, like I said, check out my first review that I did when the album first came out with my friends. It's linked in the cards. Definitely check that out. Of course, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel to see more. Follow me on my social medias. Stay tuned for more videos to come. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Love. Success.